Isn't God good? Hallelujah. Oh, we can do better than that. I didn't say nothing about myself. If I said I was good, I mean, now y'all give y'all do something like that. But I'm talking about the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, while you're standing, amen, praise the Lord. You get a chance to praise the Lord with your neighbors this morning. Why don't you look across the aisle, amen, and just bless the Lord with somebody, amen. Praise God. You can do better than that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hall All right, my brother. Praise the Lord. It's good to see Brother D in the church. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus' name. Glory to Jesus' name. Praise his name. Praise his name. Amen. All right, y'all. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Y'all talking about what y'all going to eat for dessert and everything. Go, that's enough. <laughs> Who's barbecuing tomorrow and all that? Praise God. Amen. God is good. Amen. Let's give it up for our own first lady. Amen. Praise the Lord. She was gone for the most of the week. I didn't know what to do with myself. Had me on there washing clothes, folding up clothes, mopping, sweeping. I'm doing all, rearranging furniture. Hey, energy. Glory to Jesus' name. Came down to the church and put the lights on the side of the church by myself. Amen. I paid for it for about three or four days, though. But praise God, we give God the praise for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Didn't Sister Sider do a wonderful job today? Amen. I want y'all to excuse my singing. I just that song just was talking to me today. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, amen. Glory to Jesus' name. We would ask you, amen, to turn to the book of 2 Kings. 2 Kings. We believe we have a word from the Lord for you. Amen. Glory to Jesus' name. We want to say good morning to our Facebook audience. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Those, amen, that know it, that to pray, amen, have a desire to pray, will pray. We ask you to lift up the Allen family, amen, on the passing of El, uh, Minister Allen's sister, Praise God. Hallelujah. And then we want to lift up the Siler family. That was a, also a passing in their family. I believe it was her cousin. Amen. Glory to God. So we want to hold them up in prayer. Continue to lift up Mother Dixon in prayer. Amen. We're believing God for her healing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus name. Amen. Y'all in second King chapter five. <clears throat> verse one. Now Naaman, the captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid. And she waited on Naaman's wife. Amen. She was, amen, she was, had been a prisoner. She had, because, amen, they called that the spoil of war. And, and she said unto her mistress, would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver and six thousand pieces of gold and ten changes changes of raiment and he brought the letter to the king of Israel saying now when this letter is come unto thee behold I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy and it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter that he rent his clothes and said am I God to kill and to make alive that this man doth send me doth send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy. Wherefore consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel 
against us. In other words, he's asking us to asking me to do something that he know I can't do just so he could start a war. Amen. And get, get in a fight with us again. And it was so when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes that he sent to the king saying, wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? What's your problem? Let him come now to me and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him saying, go and wash in the Jordan seven times and thy flesh shall come again to thee and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth and he went away and said, behold, I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord, his God, and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Are not Abana and Farpar rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage and his servants came near and spake unto him and said my father if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing wouldest thou not have done it how much rather then when he saith to thee wash and be clean then he went down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan according to the saying of the man of God and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child and he was clean father we thank you Lord God for yet another opportunity to share the word the king's word with these your people father we understand that according to the book of Job it says that where the king's word is there is power and so, Father, we thank you for your power. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy and your anointing, Father God, upon me to share this word with these, your people. I believe that they have ears to hear what your spirit is saying. I believe they have faith to enter into the doing and not just the hearing of your word. Now, we come against every foe to faith, anything that would try to interrupt this message, anything that any spirit that will try to uh, impede our growth and our maturity in Christ, we take authority right now in Jesus name and we cast you down and we claim victory over you and good success in this endeavor and those that agree say amen. You can have your seats, amen. Praise the Lord. I want to bring a message today And it has nothing to do necessarily with the current events. Amen. I believe that God wants to stir somebody up. I believe he wants to stir somebody up. You know, this past week when I had all kind of time on my hands, I did some rearranging of some furniture it's in my man cave. I've been saying that I'm going to get back to playing my guitar and in seeing that I haven't really played it the way I should be playing it in over two years. I told some of the brothers, I said, I picked it up the other day and my arms were sore, my wrists were sore, my fingers were, and uh, I began to pray. I said, Lord, I want to play this guitar. And uh, the strange thing was the reply that the God gave me. His reply was basically, amen, uh, you do your part first, and then I'll do my part. A amen, somebody. And I know for some people that may sound like a, a tough thing for God to say. But the truth is, when you search the scriptures out and you understand covenant, that's the way covenant works. God requires us to do something or meet a certain requirement. And once that requirement is met, then it qualifies us for what God has promised. 
And it's not like we're saved by what we do. You, you hear what I'm saying? I think I, mixed, I preached a message almost a year ago, maybe a little less. You know, time is just flying and doing crazy things nowadays. Folk, I think it's got something to do with the mask we wear and denying us of our oxygens and everything like that. So we forgetting stuff. But anyway, amen, I told you that love was unconditional. But the promises aren't. Come on, somebody. The love of God is unconditional. But the receiving of those promises have a condition on them. Come on, somebody. And so I, 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 I began to, to think about, amen, what God had said to me. Amen, glory to God. How you, you, what you, you do your part first and then I'll do mine. And so basically looking at this passage of scripture that I just gave you and what God said to me, I want to leave a message with you, a title of a message, and I want to call it, How Bad Do You Want It? How bad do you want it? A amen, somebody. Uh, uh, you know, when, when you ask somebody how bad, when, with that word, how bad do you want it? Really, the sum total of that, that, that uh, interrogative statement is dealing with your desire. Help me, somebody. It deals with your desire. Amen. And so what I did, I've got a good Bible and my Bible has powerful words in it. And, you know, so I went to the Greek, amen, glory to God, uh, because I'm a, and I know we're reading in the Old Testament. I know it's Hebrew, but I'll get you to the New Testament and it's going to, and I'll share a Greek word with you. But that word is epithumeo. And it means to set one's heart upon. It means to eagerly long for. It means to covet. It means to greatly desire. It even means to lust after. Now, the word epithumeo is emphasizing the intensity of the desire rather than the object desired. Uh, how bad do you want it? Amen. Glory to God. In this word epithumeo is describing both good desires and evil desires amen you got to understand glory to god when it comes to change uh uh desire is that dominant thing that must be in you amen for change a amen somebody See, we, 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 we often preach and we say God is getting ready to do this and God is getting ready to do that. But those of us who know the word, we understand that God has already done everything that he's going to do. And so th that in other words, when you want to see change, you got to do some changing because God is not going to change. He's the same yesterday, today and come on, somebody. He says, I'm God and I change not come on somebody and so if there's going to be some change it's got to be on you hallelujah you know God does not I said this before God does not necessarily respond to your need and sometimes people get mad when I say that amen glory to God but I'll tell you what he does respond to he responds to faith help me preach somebody God responds to faith if you you, you can be as broke hallelujah glory to God so so broke somebody say you can't pay attention amen somebody hallelujah you can be as broke hallelujah glory to God and in lack amen glory to God where there's more month than money a amen somebody but until you fall in line with God's word glory to God you're going to remain in that same condition even though God has promised to supply all the oh you ain't here for helping me you in here you see men rarely very seldomly do they do they place any effort amen or I'll use the word reach for what they need but they always reach for that thing that they really want. You ain't helping me up in here. How bad do you want it? They will reach for that thing that they really want. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You, 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 you know, when you when people people say, oh, I want God to heal me and I want a miracle. Well, if you truly want a miracle, if you truly desire blessings, if you truly want these things, you got to be willing to reach with your faith and get them. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You see, God has some degree of respect 
for someone that will reach for it. Amen, somebody. He, he has a respect for somebody, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God, that within themselves, amen, they will, they will stretch their faith, they will stretch their belief to that place, glory to God, where God, hallelujah, can, can cause an intersection, amen, because you know the Bible says without faith it is impossible to please him. Hallelujah, glory to God. And, and you got to understand, some of us don't really, 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 we, we don't catch this, but you got to catch this, amen, that your, your desires, amen, the truth of the matter is, they're more motivating to you than your need. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. Now, I, I gave you the definition from the, from the, from the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the Hebrew, I mean, from the Greek. And then when I was getting ready to leave this morning, the Holy Spirit said, now get that get the dictionary out and, and get it out of that. Get, the, get the, the definition out of that. I said, okay. So uh, I, I used the word desirable, amen. And it means work worth seeking. No, it's worth having or seeking. It's worth it. It's worth having and it's worth seeking. As by being useful, advantageous, or pleasing. Another definition said it was worth doing, something that's worth doing, or something that's worth achieve, achieve, achieving. Amen, somebody. So, so your desires are really what motivate you more than your needs. Come on, come on. So the question is, how intense is your craving for, or, or for, for your desire or for that thing that you say you want. And like I told God, I want to play this guitar. I want to play better. You do your part, and I'll do my part. Come on, somebody. What's my part? You're going to have to, pay, you're gonna have to I, I know you got the guitar, and you got several of them sitting in the corner of your man cave. You, you, you hear what I'm saying? That you've invested already. You've paid. Now, some of them was a gift, but you've paid for a few of them. They sitting over there and they cases and they really nice high high level high end guitars. But they're not gonna play that yourself. Y'all ain't hearing me today. You're gonna have to find some time. You're gonna have to get off the TV. Come on, somebody. Some stuff you're gonna you wanna watch, what you're gonna have to do is save it on the DVR to spend some time on this instrument. If you come on, somebody. Now, I'm going to help you, but you got to help yourself first. Y'all don't hear me preaching. How bad do you want it? See, 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 when it comes to being poor, can I work this? You got to be in the place where you just despise being poor. Oh, come on, somebody. You, 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 when you want a house, can I work it now? When you want a, to own property, you got to reach for it. See, the reason some folk don't own property because the price ain't right yet for them. Oh, you ain't hearing me. See, what it is, they're looking at what they, they think they can do right now. But I'm a witness. When you, put, when you get yourself, your stuff together, and you go get that, go try to get that house, believe it or not, God looks at your faith and he causes something to happen within you that you didn't even see before. You ain't hearing me. See, you was calculating. <laughs> you was estimating. But God was trying to show you that I'm living inside you and there is absolutely nothing I cannot do. I'm preaching to somebody. You got to get to the place to where you really, can I use the word hate? You got to, or I'll use a better word, despise. You got to be in a place where you despise where you currently are before you will ever be where you want to be. Come on, somebody. You got to get to that place. Somebody say it this way. You got to be tired of being sick and tired. Come on, somebody. 
you, you got, I'm being real about this. Something inside you, there's a, there's a switch that needs to be flipped. You, you, say it again, Brother Patrick. You got to turn it on. See, we're not talking about wishing. We're not talking about a hoping and a praying. We're talking about an emotion. We're talking about something, that, a desire. You know, the Bible says that in Psalm 37 and 4, it says, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Now, 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 I don't want us to misunderstand or misinterpret what that scripture is saying. Because some people think we can just come to church and say, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Then the thing we think we desire Hoop or hoop, there it is. It don't work like that. I said it don't work like that. I said it don't work like that. Number one, it says delight thyself in the Lord. Delight thyself in the Lord. Not just go through motions, but develop a real, a real, a real shown up bona fide straight up relationship with him. That's how come my, my emotions were stirred when we begin to sing the song, my soul is anchored in the Lord. It don't make no difference what's going on here, there, or anywhere. My soul is anchored in the Lord. You got to understand, glory to God, how intense is your craving for that desire? Uh, you know, when me and my wife, when we went, went looking for a house, we, we, was, we started off in San Diego looking for houses, amen, where she make, I think she was probably making $10 a, a, an hour and I was making $10, somewhere around that. And we out there looking for houses <laughs> on the San Diego market. We knew something was wrong when they took us way down in the ghetto. Took us in one house. The bathroom had so much been so soaked with you know what that the toilet felt like it was about to fall through the floor. You could took us to one house off a of skyline, and it looked good. And I told my wife, I said, "Let's go." We went and look. You know that because that 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 intensity of the craving. We was, because you, when you're ready to buy a house, you start dreaming about it. It's almost like when you're getting ready to get married. Oh, God help me. You be dreaming about it. So I, I said, we said, let's, let's go look at it one more time. And we looked at it and said, yeah, it looked good. But then some within me, I know it was the Holy Spirit saying, now go around the corner. <laughs> we went around the corner to that house. And almost right behind that house, it seemed like it was the clubhouse or the gang house for the, for the bloods. And at that time, Brother Dion didn't have his wig screwed on tight. And so we, we said, uh-uh, we already having problems with him. The last thing we want to do, it, you don't understand what I'm talking about. He, he, was, he was going through the teenage stuff. The last thing we want to do is move here, you know what I'm saying, and have that right on the next street behind us. I mean, the house was spray painted up. They was deep. Looked like half Morse High School men was standing up in there. And he happened to go to Morse. We said, uh-uh. So that craving went away quick. But, 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 but when you have a desire for something, I'm, can I let me move on? There's an intensity of the craving. I've been reading this book dealing with imagination. And you start envisioning being there, enjoying the thing, doing the thing, being there. So the question is, when, when I uh, ask the question on this, this sermon, how bad do you want it? 
on another level is how determined are you to succeed? You know, when I got out the military the first time, 21 years old, needed some money. So I signed, got, I took it to call myself taking advantage of my GI Bill. And they, they give you money for, for depending on how much of a load in college you take. So I started receiving my checks. But the problem was my craving, my desire for that college degree <laughs> wasn't greater than my desire to run the streets. Y'all ain't hearing me. In other words, I'm going to collect this money, but I'm not going to give my all to my studies. Uh, needless to say, I dropped out. You hear what I'm saying? My desire wasn't there. It wasn't strong enough. I wanted, I, want, I, just, I just wanted it. I, I needed to be in school. You understand what I'm saying? I needed to be in college. But my, but my, my, but my desire for the, to, to, to excel and my desire to see, to, 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 to see envision myself graduating with a degree wasn't there yet. You got you to gotta hear what I'm saying. So my first point is your desires are what motivate you. They motivate you more than your need. Come on. Someone said this here. Second of all, they said the proof of desire is your pursuit. Come on, somebody. Your proof of desire is pursuit. My son is in school. Says he wants to get his license or whatever he's trying to get for to be an electrician. Okay. You can say you want that, but are you willing to go through the steps, the measures of what it's going to take, the sacrifice of what it's going to take to earn it? The proof of desire is pursuit. And I can tell he's real about what he want now because he didn't rearrange some of everything. <laughs> he told me the other day, he said, I got four months left. <laughs> Amen. I can see a change in his life. You hear what I'm saying? He, said, he told, told his mom the other day, he said, I ain't hardly getting no sleep. Huh? Now, now he didn't got real with the thing because he's working and he's got to go to school. And somehow he's trying to find that, that rest in between there. Y'all ain't going to help me. He started having a problem with the school he was in because the, the instructor, I don't want to go too, too far into that, but it necessitated him making some changes. So he left a job. Y'all ain't hearing me. We prayed for him up in here. He left the job believing God. And God ended up giving him a job that had the right hours so that when he got, because the school starts at 4 o'clock in the evening. So he had to find a job that would allow him to work and get off in time to go to school. Yes, right now, he needs to make some money. He's got responsibilities. But he has a desire to have a trade. They're not hearing what I'm saying. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? He has a desire to have a trade. And so since he has a desire, a real bona fide desire, he makes the sign. In other words, right now, I'm willing to work for less money than I was working before because I see the, 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 the advantage, come on somebody, of, of getting myself through this certification process because I'm going to make even more money than that. So right now, I'm willing to go through what I got to go through to get to that. The proof of desire is pursuit. Like I said, I've always wanted to play the guitar, always. I had a little wind-up guitar. Some of y'all don't remember them. Them little wind-up guitars. You know, I had plastic guitars with plastic strings on them. I, I, had, I even had paper guitar. Where I just saw myself as a kid. Cardboard guitars. So when I asked God, 
give me some help at getting better. He spoke to me and said, you do your part first and then I'll do my part. Hallelujah. In other words, what am I, what, what, in other words, what I am willing to invest my time and efforts toward reveals what I really want. I'll say it again. What you're willing to invest your time and effort towards really speaks to what you really want. If, and, uh, break it down, Pastor. So now if I sit all day long looking at the boob tube, that's showing me that's what I really want. Y'all don't like me preaching like this here. If I sit there and let CNN massage my imagination in fear, anger, and hate, instead of getting myself aside and looking at what God's word says, every word you hear is painting by numbers on your brain. You catching what I'm saying? It's painting a picture. It's putting an image on you. It's getting you to the place where you look at stuff so much, you scared. Go inside Home Depot and you, shoo. Y'all ain't hearing me. Scared to go to church. Y'all don't hear me preach. Scared to get on the freeway. What you, what, you, what you keep investing your time and your effort toward reveals what you really want. If you sow to your flesh, <laughs> you're going to reap corruption. But if you sow to your spirit, you get life everlasting. Come on. Nah, nah, nah. I preached then. I could almost close the book. Because when you people say, I want this God to do this and I want God to do that. And I want, God has done everything. You got to get it through your thick brain. It's on you now. The ball is in your court. And some stuff ain't going to show up until you get there. I'm in trouble. The real proof of your desire is what you are willing to pursue. What books excite you? What do you love talking about? Some people is off, off in some of everybody's business. They know what JC and them doing. They know what Beyonce and them doing. They know what this one doing. They know what that one doing. They know what the Kardashians is doing. They know this doing, that doing. They know everybody. And they don't even know what they own self doing. Y'all ain't hearing me. I said, y'all not hearing. See, me looking at their life and the billions and millions they got ain't putting jack in my pocket. So the question becomes, what receives your time and attention? What dominates your thoughts? Some people, every time I turn around, they putting something on Facebook. Dumb stuff. I'm trying to hold myself back from repeating some dumb stuff I saw yet last night. Some dumb stuff. You know, they got this thing about the gun violence and stuff. I'm going to say it because it was dumb. Somebody said, if God wanted to get rid of the gun, guns, then when Cain killed Abel, he would have got rid of the rocks. That's dumb. You might be watching me on this TV. That's dumb. Straight up dumb. Even if you didn't say it, I wouldn't even put that on my page. Y'all excuse me. Dumb stuff. You need to come back to church. Because you done lost your mind. He would have got rid of the rocks. See, can I get real, Elder Patterson? What you think about the most is what you have chosen to be your master. What you think 
about the most is what you have chosen to be your master. Talking about desire. Mark eleven twenty four 24 said, therefore I say unto you what things soever you desire. You see what I'm saying? It didn't say what you need. <laughs> it didn't say what you need. It said what you desire. So if this, using the word desire based on the definitions that I have given you, something got to be intense about what I'm asking God about. There's got to be some proof. Come on, somebody. Some proof that what I'm believing God for, that I'm willing to go through whatever it takes to make it manifest. What sort of things you desire when you pray? Believe you receive and you'll have it. Hallelujah. You got to have a passion. Desire, interwoven in desire is passion. You hear what I'm saying? Interwoven in desire is passion. There's a, uh, a family, Pastor Anna and her children. I had the privilege of, and most of y'all know my testimony of mentoring them, not mentoring them, uh, tutoring them. One of them was in first grade. The other one, was, I think, was in fifth or sixth grade. And the other one was on his way to high school. And I had the privilege of tutoring them. Little did I know that when I went to this home that these folk were saved. She's now pastoring a church. And while I'm tutoring, the, out of the discussion, the children started talking about what they wanted to do. You know, this is what I want to do. I want to play the drums. I want to play the guitar. I want to play the keyboard. That's what these kids, these three kids, this, this, this sister Anna had. The youngest one, he wanted to be drum so bad, he, every time you see him, he's got pencils beating on something, beating on something. Well, to make a long story short, today, he's got a full set of drums. The other son said he wanted to play the guitar. He had an old busted up guitar that he was trying to, he was trying to play it. What I did, I went in my house, and I had so many guitars, I said, hey, I took one of them over there. You can have this one. You, you get what I'm saying? When you get to the point to where you really desire something, and it's real, and you're willing to take, do whatever, do, don't you know God will call people alongside you Amen. to assist you in getting there? But see, the devil will have you just stuck by your own self in your little old stuck rut, making you try to make you believe that you all by yourself. He be lying to you. But, when, but what God is looking for you is to believe what his words say about you and you take some steps and go forth and watch God open the door and provide. You see, I got, to, I got to preach this. 30-something years ago, or maybe it was 28 years ago, when me and Renee started generating that desire for that to buy or to purchase a home and to do better. That's what, basically, that's what the word prosper means. It means do better. See, some people think, oh, he's prosperous. That means that person constantly does better. We had a desire to do better. And it just so happens my mother sent me a, a tape, a cassette tape from her pastor, all the way from Buffalo, New York, and said, listen to this here, Cliff. And every day I'd go to work, I had me a little, anybody remember them Sony Walkmans? That little cassette recorder thing. With, and I'd sit there and work. And I listened to that message over and over and over again all day long. When it when the one side of the tape in pop, I flip it over and boop, put it back. And the night the name of the message was act like it's so. It wasn't talking about faking it till you make it. 
It was saying act like it's so. And so what I did, I went across the street from my home. They had an AMVETS, those that are from San Diego that lived in the area, they understand what I'm with. I went to the AMVETS. It's like a Goodwill, sponsored by, I believe, the veterans. And uh, I saw a briefcase, an attache case. I think I got it for $2 or $5. I can't remember what it was. But I bought it from that Goodwill. It's like a Goodwill salvage. It's an AMVETS. And I couldn't open it. I started to break it. I said, no, don't break this thing. It looked, this thing looked brand new. And it sat in the house. And I prayed. We used to have some prayer in our house. Woo, we used to have some prayer. I remember one time I had a dream that I was laying. The carpet in, the house, in our house was white. Could you imagine white carpet with Reggie, Dion, and Tiffany running through the front door? All the, huh? <laughs> I had a dream uh, of laying hands on the floor and from my hand colors came out so we was having prayer one night me first lady and, and uh, brother Ed and I think brother Aaron and somebody else we were praying and the anointing came high and, and, and I said God showed me last night that I was laying hands on the floor and the copper color was changing and then somebody said lay hands on the floor then Listen to me. We didn't know no better. We went on here and laid hands on the floor. We laid hands on the floor. The very next month, when it was time to pay our rent, I went into the office where the landlord was, and before I could give him a dime, and I had not spoken to him about this, before I could give him a dime, he said, Mr. Sessom, we got to change your carpet. Or either, or either dye it and change the color. Am I right about it? You got to be willing <laughs> to do the crazy stuff. A amen, somebody. Before I go to my next verse, my, my next set of scripture. I, you see, the reason Naaman had a problem was because the, the Jordan River was dirty. He could not arrange his thinking to see how something dirty could make him clean. So he drew a conclusion that, you know, number one, he, he, he felt dissed. Can I use the word dissed in church? Disrespected because he's a great man. And instead of Elisha coming out to him and addressing him face to face, he merely sent him some instructions. Oh, I'm preaching and you ain't saying nothing. You see, the truth of the matter is you and I, we receive instruction every time we come in this church. We receive instruction. Hallelujah, glory to God. See, you you want something, but that's a prayer. I hear you. You see something. When God tell me to do, God, let me tell you something, how God speaks. Hallelujah. Some of you can't hear your own self thinking. Hallelujah. You you was hard-headed to your mama. Hard-headed to you. You ain't come on, somebody. If God's you ain't gonna no, you ain't trying to listen to God. You God sends men, He sends preachers to preach to you to hear him. Uh, come, you hear what I'm saying can I preach like I feel it some of y'all wasn't on Bible study on Tuesday but I had a word for somebody you know right now it's in the NBA right now the NBA they going toward the championship and, and, you know there's some teams remember brother, brother John brother Deacon Collins amen they may, they may have the best record in the league during the regular season they got the best record I mean they beat they, they're the most come on they say who do you think's going to win well such and such has got the best record they got the highest percentage but here's the problem see when you get to the championship when you start getting in the playoffs things intensify y'all ain't hearing me preach up in here things intensify 
in my God, what you find is the one that's the hungriest. Those are the ones that's willing to play in pain. Those are the ones that, my God, they might twist their ankle over 90 degrees, run to the locker room with the medical people, probably get a shot of pill or something that they ain't telling us about, and next thing you know, 15 minutes later, they running back out on the court, hallelujah, ready to shoot some more hoops. Y'all ain't hearing me up in that place. See, some of y'all quit too fast. Hallelujah. You got to understand, we're on the verge of, my God, doing something great, and you still doing the same thing we've been doing. God says it's time. How bad do you want it? It's time to step our game up. It's time to take this thing to the next level. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Talk about what taking God so long. God, my God, already finished doing the work he's doing. God's waiting on you to step up your game. God's waiting on you to get involved. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody help me preach. Somebody help me preach. It's time to take this thing to the next level. You sit up here worrying about money and God didn't already supply your need. Got a freezer over there full of meat, full of chicken, full of pork, full of got everything you got coffee cream off. Come on, your butter, come on. God, bread. You can't see God moving for you. He telling you, hold your money on that. I got you right there. At least I'll put some gas in your tank and bring your rump to church. <laughs> Sit down. Oh, shade on my high. I feel him, y'all. I feel him, y'all. I feel him today. And so I prayed about that at a shake case. And the Holy Ghost said it just like he said, line the numbers up. So I put all the numbers on the case the same. Zero, 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 one, one, one. You know, I ain't gonna say six, 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 but you know, I put them all the same. And all of a sudden, pop, that thing came open and it was a brand new attache case. Now, the kind of job I had, I'm supposed to wear sneakers and blue jeans and, you know, polo shirts to work. But I had a dream. I had a desire. Come on, somebody. And so what did I do? I come strolling up in that place one day with my attache case. Come on. Had me my, had a, a short sleeve Hager shirt on. Ironed and pressed. Patterson style. You see, some of y'all don't know that joke. Dion, get to see how he busting up. Patterson style. Reggie used to work at McDonald's. That brother used to wash and press his uniform to go sling some burgers. I mean, he was... I mean, that brother should have been in the Marine Corps. His stuff was so straight up. Put on me some slacks and walked on up in there. Y'all got to hear me preach. And they... Looking at me, I could hear it. I could hear the rumbles. What the heck is going on with Cliff? Has he lost his mind? I sure have. I've lost that mind y'all tried to give me. I got the mind of Christ right now. God has not destined me to be stuck right here. But hoping and a praying for a, a better life for me and my wife. Come on, somebody. I got a desire. I got a hunger and I got a thirst my God, I'm preaching. I got a hunger. I got a thirst for this thing. And I'm acting like it's so. In other words, I'm psyching myself out. That's what they say. I'm developing an image of an individual who goes to a job, glory to God, an office type job. To Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Carrying a briefcase. And I strolled up in there every day with a briefcase. Had my Bible in there. Had my Walkman up in there. And, and a tablet so I could take some notes you know, on what I was. You hear what I'm saying? I sure did. Now y'all might think that. Boom. Next thing you know he had a house. No. I did that for some years. <laughs> I was developing that, that desire. I was developing that thing. And so then when the day came to where I had to, to, where, where the, to, to release, that's what I'm preaching you in, to release everything that I developed, found myself at a, at, a, at a job fair. 
It was sponsored by the non I, mean, I didn't left my message, y'all. Sponsored by the Non-Commissioned Officers Association. All of these military bearing type people, people that have been in the military, they understand military bearing. I mean, we're in these lines for these different employees, and they are at our tent. Come on. They was, they was, they was there. They was doing their thing. Glory to God. I mean, they was straight up everybody in line. You know, it looked like they did one of them, you know, ready fronts or something, you know. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Come, Percy, help me up in there. You used to be in the army. You know what I'm talking about. I mean, in a straight line. I'm the only one sitting up there like this here and stuff. You know, I'm, 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 shoot, I'm tripping on. I'm like, what in the hell? Am I in the right place? All of a sudden, there was a, 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 an employer had this big old banner over the, 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 uh, the, the desk of the table they were at. And it had all these different military ratings from the Navy. And I looked at them ratings and I said, it's got every rating up there except what I did. Now, now hold on. I was a fire control technician, not fighting fires, but missile systems, firing missiles. I worked on the radar and the computers to keep that stuff guided to the, to the target. Now, if he got, they want a sonar technician, if they want a radio man or a gunner's mate or an or, 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 or electronic warfare technician, somewhere in there, I should have been up in there because it comes from the same rating group. How come mine ain't up in there? And remember, everybody's at attention. Except me. So, What's the title of this message? How bad do you want it? So instead of sitting up there like a bump on a log and a dump on a stump and stupid, come on, I hollered out. See, y'all got to understand, it cost me some money that I barely had to even go to this thing. Whew, I feel God, y'all, I'm sorry. It, it happens like this to me sometimes. And I opened up my mouth I wasn't, I wasn't even at the desk yet. I was probably about 15 people back. And I said, hey! Everybody in the room looked like, what in the world? Where did this ignorance come from? I said, hey. Now, I might not have said, hey, I think my language changed. I'm from Buffalo, New York. We say, yo. Yo! I said, what's up? The man looked up and said, what's going on here? I said, yo. He said, can I help you? I said, can a fire control technician get in this line? All of a sudden, the dude with the red hair looked at the other one and said, they was whispering to each other. And I saw him, heard him point at me and put his finger down. He said, yeah. Basically, what the man said is, I want to talk to him. Y'all got to understand something. You gotta understand the desire thing. It make you do stuff when you really desire. You don't sit up there and become second class when you got a desire. No, you don't. You don't let you don't let stuff pass you up and pass you by when you got a desire. Remember about the man. I think the thing was Zacchaeus. He heard that Jesus was coming. He he was the shortest one. What he do? He climbed up a sycamore tree. <laughs> When they tried to make him shut up, he said, I ain't shutting up. He had a desire. Can I preach this thing like I feel it? Hallelujah, glory to God. When I got up there, the man asked me the stupidest question. He said, do you know how to work on batteries? I said, batteries? Little did I know that the units that they were looking for, they were looking for somebody who knew something about some electronics and wasn't scared of batteries. I said, well, then the man said, have you ever changed the battery in the car? I said, yeah. He said, can, can you go to this interview? Had the craziest interview interview on Saturday at 7 p.m. out in Mission Valley, I mean Mission Bay somewhere. I freaked out. I told my wife, I said, baby, that sounds freaky. She said, what? She said, here I am living in Encanto. And I'm supposed to go up to Mission Bay at 7 o'clock in a hotel for an interview? They, they, okay. I went there. And it just so happens that the gentleman that was interviewing, guess what? He, was, he had retired from the military, from the Navy. And he had been a, a, an individual that certified the equipment that I worked on in the Navy. I opened up my mouth. 
I had a desire. I had a craving. I had developed the image. That's my phone. Somebody hitting that thing saying, preach that some. You know, you, huh? And from then on, six months later, we bought our first house. See, the proof of desire is the willingness to reach, to go for it. You will always reach for what you really desire. How much time I got left? Help me. Come on, phone. Okay, I got, I got time. Go to Mark chapter 5. Let's make it quick. Let's wrap this up. Go to Mark chapter 5. Is this all right for somebody? I believe God helping someone. When I cry, God speaking to somebody. I, I, that's, that, uh, that's one of them. That, that's the compassion that comes out of me when I know that God is speaking to somebody and desires for you to do better. You hear what I'm saying? He wants it for you. Mark chapter 5. I believe he wants it for this church. Huh? Y'all getting it in Mark chapter 5? Verse 25, a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years, somebody say he went there, and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus came in the press behind and touched his garment, for she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had, or power had gone out of him, turned about him in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, thinking for the natural, thou seest the multitude thronging thee and said thou who touched me. Now hold on for a second. Now you didn't see folk walk on top of water, make wine out of water. <laughs> Raised from them. From, and you're going to question them? <laughs> you're going to second guess? Huh? You're going to second guess? You see somebody getting results. And you're going to question the validity of the anointing upon their life? Oh, God, I'm preaching. Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her. He looked, and he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, she got healed, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of that plague. Since that day, when I opened up my mouth, after I had developed that image of being doing better, we ain't been broke since. That's the truth. We ain't been broke since. Come on. See, when you really have a desire, Brother Dion, and I thank God that you came to church today, you will always reach, you will always reach for what you desire. See, desire will always make you go the extra mile. That's why I have a problem. When we say, hey, y'all, we, we're, we're, our vision is to put these buildings out here. And folk keep doing the same thing they always do. Scared to give God an extra $10. Okay, don't go there, Pastor Sessa. I thank God for the few that's in here that put stuff into the building fund. Thank God for it. Maybe it's $10, $15 here, $5 here. That, thank God, and, and God is blessing and rewarding you for that because that's the vision. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, let's, let's, can we wrap it up? Because I didn't got somebody mad. Amen. You see, this woman had been in her condition for 12 years. Is that what the word says? And on top of that, she didn't just camp out in that condition. She had a desire to do something about it. Before she went to Jesus, she spent all her money. And the Bible says, irregardless of how much money she spent, her condition remained the same. As a matter of fact, it looked like it got worse because now you got this stuff and you're broke. But she had a desire inside of her. You know what a desire really is, Brother Reggie? It's a seed. Oh God. It's a seed. And see, when you nurture that desire, we call that pregnancy. Am I in the book? 
We call that pregnancy. So now you're pregnant with a desire. <laughs> She's carrying in her spiritual womb of what it's going to look like to not to have this problem no more. <laughs> See, some of y'all got to develop this image inside you of what it means to stop going paycheck to pay. I'm preaching it and you're mad at me. God, stop going paycheck to paycheck. Somebody man to man and junk to junk. Come on somebody, I'm preaching like you, like I'm preaching to you. You gotta get to the point where you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. There was a day, glory to God, hallelujah, while I got sick and tired of living with a bunch of crackheads. Even though I at that time was a crackhead, I got tired of living with a crackhead. Every time I turn around, somebody else coming through the front door, smoking crack up in my house. Well, I was in somebody, it wasn't even my, I was just living the crack. And I got tired. I said, I, I'm tired of this here. I tried to go to get prayer. I tried to go to church, bought myself a Bible from the Goodwill. Next thing you know, my Bible missing and it's so Either sold it or stole it, but my Bible came up missing, and that was that was the last straw. Here I am trying to dig myself out of this root, and you got the nerve to get rid of my Bible. I packed up all my clothes, put my clothes in a raggedy suitcase, left the house, walked down the street, didn't care whether who was on the corner looking at me. Glory to God, I, 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 I come on, that suitcase had all my stuff in it. Matter of fact, I, I remember using my right leg to keep the suitcase moving. It was full, glory to God. I walked and I walked I walked to Bishop Tate's house I got there he had a broke down car in front of the apartment he lived in I said Bishop Tate I done left that house he said I tell you what he says if you he says as long as you stay in the car you can come up here and eat we can have Bible study we'll give you prayer you know what Th you gotta have a desire you got to get it down inside you that I'm not playing around no more. The, 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 the buck stops here. Come on, somebody. God got it for me. There's more for me than what I'm experiencing right now. I want all my stuff. I don't want to leave nothing on the table no more. Y'all ain't hearing me up in this place. I ain't leaving nothing in the, on the table no more. I don't care whether, what they, whether I'm embarrassed. I don't care if they say she kicked me out or don't make no difference. I'm out anyway because I'm trying to get in. My God, my God. God, my God, my God, I believe to say I'm like the prodigal son. Hallelujah. Even God's higher servant, my father's higher servant, got bread enough to eat and more to spare. I'm tired of walking around stinking. I'm tired of walking around smelling myself. I'm tired of my God not wanting to not being able to eat what I feel like eating. I'm tired of getting kicked to the curb. I'm tired of getting disrespected. I'm tired of, I'm tired. I'm tired. You got to get to the place. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That you got to desire to do better than what you're doing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This woman didn't make no matter, glory to God, who was around her. She didn't make no matter whether she was supposed to be there or not. All she knew that Jesus was the healer and she developed an image in her mind. She had a desire if I can just touch his clothes. If I can just touch his clothes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, when you want something bad enough, Sister sister Jeanette, when you want something bad enough, you find a way to get it. Y'all don't like me preaching like this here. See, this ain't the weak church on the corner where we just sit still and sing kumbaya. Like, like, woe is us. We just the weak. No, 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 no. The Bible said, let the weak say I'm strong. See, if you get a revelation of Psalm 91, you walk around in a bubble. There's a force field around you. There's a force field around you and the devil can't touch you unless you let your force field down. Some of y'all need to go look at Star Trek or something, hallelujah, to get to understanding, oh God, about this field that's around you. My God, they can shoot, they, the devil can shoot his phasers and everything else at you, but you got a, a shield around you. Glory to God, hallelujah, is an impenetrable shield. And my God, and you ain't got to worry about your back. Somebody say, don't turn your back to the devil. Well, who cares? The glory of the Lord is my rear guard. Somebody give him praise right now. How bad do you want it? 
How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? See, you can, you can get over sickness. I have. Come on, somebody. How long have you been doing the food ministry, Brother John and Brother Clarence? Almost four years. That means four years ago I had a heart attack. <laughs> and they're like, Pastor, ease up. Ain't you got to sit down? You had a heart attack. So? I remember when I, when, when I first, when they first said I didn't, that, I, that they couldn't find nothing, I came home. Remember I came home? No, that wasn't the heart attack. That was when I, when I got diagnosed with the sugar. Was it that, when, when I was on the treadmill and Tiffany came into the, came in the house and I was on that treadmill running. I was getting down. She said, Daddy, be careful. <laughs> you don't want to have a heart attack. I looked at her. You don't understand. <laughs> I'm running like this because ain't nothing wrong with me. You got to understand what I'm saying. See, y'all, I don't know, a little half clap. I'm running on this treadmill because the devil's lying to me, trying to tell me that the doctors missed what was there. Come on, somebody. But I'm believing God's word that I am the healed. So, it, so, ah, so what I'm doing. I'm getting on this treadmill and I'm running for my life. I'm running and running and running to show myself, to prove to this. To erase. I'm taking that old program up out of here. I'm working on this. That's where it's at. That's what I'm talking about. I'm working on this. I wish that I had, I wish. See, messages like this cost you something. They cost you something. I'm working on this. Listen, Brother Patrick, you got to learn how to fuel the fire for your desires. Other folk will see what you're doing. Patrick put a whole bunch of money in church. One thing I can't stand, when somebody talk about what I'm doing, when they ain't doing nothing. See, I'm in trouble. The reason people talk about what you're doing because they wish that they, you would give them some of what you're doing. <laughs> huh? Huh? And, and then when the manifestation is rolling on you, now they're trying to stick close to you. Why, give me a wide shot. My brother, talking to PJ, give me a wide shot. And so now they're trying to be all up on you. Something happening in his life. Let me get all up on him. You know, let me tell you something. I don't care how close you get to him. <laughs> you don't get this by osmosis. Now, now I know there's a scripture that says, uh, he that walks with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be uh, destroyed. And I understand that there is some, some uh, 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 what word am I looking for? Validity to associating yourself with the proper people. <laughs> but it don't work. It only works a certain way. It don't work for the one that's the hanger on. It works for the one who's doing stuff. I'm preaching this. <laughs> See, what it's saying is the one who has a desire that's working their desire. It, it, it's saying hook up with the right people. Because if you're not, what they're going to do is suck, oh, suck away from. Can I say what I think? Does that? I'm not cussing. That's not a bad word, is it? They're going to suck from your vision. They're going to suck from your desire. They're going Because they're going to bring all that negativity. Y'all understand that the real spiritual warfare ain't out there. We command the demons that's over him to stop. No, it's inside your brain. And just like Jesus had to tell Peter, Satan, get behind me. Sometimes sometime you got to tell them folk who look something like you, got some names that's kind of close to yours, even some relatives sometimes, you got to get behind me. Because I got, I got places to be and stuff to do. 
You got to understand what I'm saying. Don't slow me down. Now, how do you feed your desire? I'm almost done. I didn't even finish that dinner. Y'all know the story. Just like I said, you got to concentrate, Sister Cheryl, you got to concentrate on your vision. You got to concentrate on your desire. You got to visualize it. Do you see yourself at your book signing? You, you, you got to understand something. You got to see yourself with your table. Got your, what they call it, your poster up here. You got your book over here. Got you, you know, all dressed up nice and got your stack of books. Come, come on, see it, Sister Cheryl. And you got a line going out the door. Got a line going out the door of folks wanting to, you to just sign their book. They say, before I sign, you got to put $15 in the. Uh oh, Sister Cheryl, hold on. And you got to get yourself one of them good phones and one of them little square things so they can just swipe their card. And, and don't forget to charge them another two dollars and twenty five cent. Don't don't detract from your your blessing for the for user fees. Develop it in your mind. It'll give you momentum to get done. Hear that, brother Dion? See yourself installing electrical stuff. See yourself running a crew. Do you hear what I'm saying? See yourself with your own truck. Ramsey Electricity. Commercial and residential. Come on, somebody. We do from ceiling fans to solar panels. Come on, somebody. You hear that, Joko? See, when you see yourself there, it, the Bible says if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you'll be filled. I ain't thought that meant the word. That meant the desires of your heart. They don't like me preaching this. When you want what you want, you do what you got to do to get what you want. I'm not done. I'm not done. You see, my desire, Sister Kathy, ain't predicated on what you believe. I'm not talking at you. I'm just giving an example. It's not predicated on what you believe. It's predicated on what I believe. <laughs> All things are possible to them that believe. <laughs> so you can talk crazy and stupid and natural all you want to, but I'm going to lock in. I'm going to lock in. I'm going to visualize. Somebody say visualize. visualize. What is visualizing? I stole this from somebody. It, it means sustaining the mental photograph of what you want to receive from God. Let me tell you something. I've worked on jobs where I had to punch a clock. And I worked on jobs where they just let you do your thing. Believe me, the job where they let you do your thing is way better. I'm almost done. It's like the first time you buy a brand new car. It's hard to buy a used one after that. I'm serious. It takes some doing. That new car smell, the first one in the seat, engine all clean got maintenance free and all that kind of, it's hard y'all get where I'm, at? where I'm at you got to get that photograph Are you, I don't know who I'm talking to in here but I'm hoping you're getting something see that woman with the issue of blood she carried that dream in her heart and she ignored the distraction from that crowd
I got this here. You will never accomplish a great dream without a burning desire for it. When I worked on the base, I like to testify when I preach. When I worked on the base, I, 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 was in, I found myself in school. So I went to him and said, can I bring my laptop in here so I can work on my degree? Now, the people in my com company told me no. But they said, but we're going to submit it to the people, because I was a contractor, but we're going to submit your request to the people on the base, and we'll see what they say. Well, it happened to be this one guy. He was the deputy director of the facility. And he happened to be a brother from the Church of God in Christ. And when they said no, he vetoed what they said. He said, what is he doing this degree? They said, he's trying to get his master's degree for, for, because he's a minister. He said, let him bring his stuff in. Am I right? I sat there on that job, got paid, earned my master's degree and my doctorate degree. It don't matter what they say. You got to develop a vision. Come on, somebody. So I talked about, your, 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 you know, some of y'all talk too much. Uh-oh, sound like Minister Allen. Now, y'all talk too much. Remember Minister Allen said sometimes you got to shut up? You tell everybody about your dream, and you ain't got it fully developed in you. And so you tell somebody about the dream before you got the picture fully developed, so they talk some doubt to you, and now you're questioning whether you got the dream or not. It's quiet. I want me a Mercedes uh, uh, 2022 S550 or whatever. They got one, the latest, greatest with everything in it. Don't you know that the, the maintenance? It costs $300 just to do the brakes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It remind me, of, I'm in trouble, y'all. I know that went over my time, y'all. It remind me of Bill Winston. He said he was in the gas station one time, <laughs> filling up his car. <laughs> he filling up his car. He said, "Give me sixty-five dollars of premium on such and such." And some dude that ain't got nothing to do with him, ain't riding with him or nothing, just in line in the AM. He in the line. He's next. Sixty-five dollars. I said, dude, I ain't asked you for nothing. You get where I'm at? Yep. Here's this one for Patrick. You got to make up your mind that you're going to associate yourself with, po with people who think big. If you can't read books, get some cassettes, get some CDs. Come on, when I work out, I got preachers preaching to me. I cheat. <laughs> I got 30 minutes of good preaching coming into my ears. And sometimes when I get real tired, I close my eyes. And I might hikam ahaya. Shandala bakote kele mose. When they get to praying, they get to the point of the, of the teaching where they praying, I receive it in Jesus' name. You get what I'm saying? You got to do. Now, also, my last point. Somebody say concentration. You got to be about yours. You got to be about yours. You got to concentrate. Huh? You got to focus. You got to see the thing completed even before it gets started. What did you just say? Thank you. Which brings us to this, and I'm not going to do this to y'all today. But the last statement or confession says, our steps are ordered by the Lord today, and we declare the end from the beginning. In Jesus' mighty name. In other words, I see myself there while I'm still here. 
Somebody give God some praise. Y'all done, y'all, y'all done made me, y'all got me to stop. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? Amen. There's someone out there. Perhaps you've never received Jesus Christ as your savior. And we would give you the opportunity to receive him. Amen. Now, what I want you to do is just repeat some words after me and then we're going to have some prayer for some folk. I don't know if I brought my little confession thing. Repeat some words after me. A little prayer. Praise the Lord. Amen. See, in order to receive Jesus, in order to be saved, thank you, sweetheart. Hallelujah. Thank you. Got my little cheat sheet. This, this keeps me straight. Hallelujah. To receive Jesus as your Lord, you've got to believe that he bled and died on Calvary's cross for your sins. you got to believe that by the power of the Holy Ghost, he was raised from the dead. you got to believe that in your heart. And you must confess it or say it, not just think it, but you've got to say it with your mouth. So if that's you out there, whether you're in this room, Facebook, or YouTube, I would ask you to repeat this simple prayer after me. Father, let's do it all together. Let's help them. Father, it is written in your word that if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that you have raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Therefore, Father, I confess that Jesus is my Lord. I make him my Lord of my life right now. I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. I renounce my past life with Satan And close the door to any of his devices. I thank you, Lord, for forgiving me of all my sin. Jesus is my Lord, and I am a new creation. Old things have passed away. Now, all things become new. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, beloved, if that's you, if you prayed that prayer by faith, amen, I'm here to welcome you into the family or the household of faith, praise God. Now, what you should do, as I've always tell everybody else, is get yourself into a Bible-believing church. Get yourself into a church where the Holy Spirit, amen, is allowed to have his way, amen. Get into a church so you can be taught, amen, so you can be instructed, amen, in the ways of righteousness, amen. We would love to have you. Amen. Almost forgot that. We would love to have you. We're located here at 16681 Wood Road, and that's in the city of Riverside. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. About a half mile from Martin Luther King High School, three quarter of a mile. Amen. From Van Buren Boulevard. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Put me a little bit of light music on. Amen. I believe that there's someone in this room. Amen. That desires prayer. I believe that.